Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with something different today, a tote bag that I have never made. I have a supplier who I can buy yardage, not entire bolts, but I don't get to pick the prints and every now and then he'll throw something in that isn't quilt cotton. <laughs> and this stuff came to me and it's, uh, I asked him, he said it's linen and it's a little bit thicker than cotton and you know a little bit rough it's you know it's not like rough to touch but it's more durable and I thought well I can use it for tote bags so I'm inspired to do a tote bag tutorial if you are one of my exclusive shoppers I will have this in the next sale which will be the first weekend after I upload this video and I still have more of these prints and I also have greens all the same fabric. Aren't they cool? I loved the prints, but when I touched them, I was like, this isn't quilt cotton. You know, you could use it for quilts if you want um, a blanket for like a picnic. That would be cool. All right, I watched three videos. The first two, I was like, this just seems like, I don't know, probably too much work. But then I watched a third one and that person, she showed a different way that I've never seen to attach straps, handles, you know, long straps to this bag. It's an uh, origami bag. And I liked that. So I said, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. I'm making mine smaller than she made because I want you guys to be able to get it out of half yard cuts. And I think I figured out a way to do that in case you have some half yards. Now you can go ahead and use quilt cotton for this. Doesn't have to be this durable and it will be lined so it'll be good. And or you could use something you know canvas like or denim whatever you like for the outside and then just line it with something like even muslin whatever. Give it a try. If you're interested in becoming an exclusive shopper to get your grubby little hands on fabric that I sell there's info in the link down below. Also, I will link to all three videos that I watched because we all learn in different ways. So maybe one of those videos will be better for you. The top video that you see is the one that I liked the most. Let's just get started. I'm going with this for the outside and the straps. So for this piece, I actually do need a half of a yard. And I'm going to cut, uh, first I'm just going to even off this edge. And then I'm cutting a 12 inch strip. So down to the six for me because I'm on the 18. And then I need six inches. That's a total of 18 inches. So if you have a half yard, you're good. For the lining, we just need a 12 inch strip. Again, even off my edge and 12 inches and you have this left over. I'm actually going to start with the straps. Now I'm making mine shorter than the other person made. I just thought they looked really really long and I also want it to uh, fit in that half yard. So we're going to try something a little bit shorter. I'm actually going to leave the selvages on and I'm going to just cut this in half. I'm just going to cut it in half on the fold. And I guess I'll take just a little bit of that selvage off. So here's what you can do. Let's just take it to 21 inches. So you need two strips, 21 inches, and it's six wide. I'm going to take these to the machine and I'm just going to fold about a quarter of an inch and sew on each end of both strips. This is very much like the uh, straps I would make for my crazy quilt tote bags. I need to get back to that. And we just did that so that those edges would not be raw. Now you're going to fold in half and press. Open it up. Go back to your ironing board and fold this edge in to that fold line that you just created and press 
and do the same on this side and press. Now take this and fold it in half and you can press and then we're just going to go and sew all the way around. It's going to close this edge and by doing it, you know, the sewing on the other side too, it just makes it look like a nice professional strap. This stuff is very easy to sew. I like this for tote bags. I probably should order some. I wanted to mention, these are significantly shorter than the other person's straps. She made hers 30 inches each, and mine are only 21. I'm thinking this will be um, more like a handbag because I'm making the bag smaller, but you are free to make your straps any length you want. You would just need extra fabric. Or you could make one strap, you know, really long, and you'll have this leftover from your half yard to make another strap. That would have been pretty cool. And if you want to make the bag bigger, however tall you made it this way, which is 12 inches for me, multiply that by 3, so it's 12 by 36. She did 15, 15 times 3 is 45, so her piece started out 15 by 45. And uh, we'll just see how this works with the size that I'm making. Okay, we're putting these aside. Now we're going to take the lining and we will do the same thing to the top, the outer. I'm just going to put these together because I like to take shortcuts. And this is very manageable. My salvages are all on this side. So we said we needed 36 inches going to put the fold right on my line. Half of 36 is 18, so I just need to cut here, and we will have perfect 12 by 36 inch rectangles. We have two 12 by 36 inch pieces. Doesn't look like it's going to be a tote bag, does it? <laughs> I need to go watch the video to make sure I'm not skipping something. I think I know what I'm doing. I think. We're going to be laying these right sides together. You know, one on top of the other. Now I'm going to come over here so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to take one of the straps and I'm just going to put it in this corner and I'm going to have it stick out a little bit. So it's in there really good. At a diagonal like that. Can you see? It's hard to see. But this is my strap. Like that. Let me do it on this. Then you'll be able to see better. I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to put a pin right there. Just to hold that into place. This corner... I'm going to do it in the opposite direction. I attached it at the top over here. I'm attaching it at the bottom over here. Right there. Whoops, don't use the same one that you just used. This one. So see we have the two straps in opposite directions. Now right side down. I'm going to put this on here and since you cut them together they should match up perfectly or perfectly enough and I am going to put some pins and we need to leave a space on one end because we have to turn this sucker. What I do is I put two pins together so that I know I have an opening between these. So two here, because I'll forget. I'll forget and just go right over it. And then I'm going to put two here. You know, leave a big enough opening so that your big fat hand can go through it. <laughs> now I will place a few pins here and there just because this is quite a long rectangle. Oh, make sure you don't pin the other end of your strap to anything. That's going to be just loose inside. How about this? I'm going to fold it 
and I'm going to just pin it there to keep it out of the way. That makes sense for someone like me who can screw things up easily. Same here, I'm just going to fold this up and pin it. Just to keep it out of the way. Just be careful when we turn that. Ooh, that's right. I am going to go sew all the way around, except I will not sew where my opening is. Oh, and when you get to the straps, Robocall. When you get to the straps, you can go all the way around, but the other person did it uh, diagonal. I am going to do a diagonal, but if you want, you can go all the way around first, if that's easier for you, and it'll be that much more secure, and then you can come back and go across. She said about an inch down, uh, so whatever works for you. I'll show you what mine look like when I'm done. The first thing I'm going to do is go in there and take those pins out before I forget that they exist. That one first. I got it. This is what I did. I didn't go all the way around. When I was coming in this direction, as soon as I hopped on to that strap, I just went across, and then I did back stitching. I backed up and went over it again, and then I came back over it again, and then I continued. That should be in there. Now I'm going to turn this. Then we get to do some folding. It's like a craft. Ooh. Just poke that corner out down here. And the one up here. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this is gonna be on eBay. So go check it out, will ya? Starts at a penny, free shipping, USA only. Now I'm going to go and uh, at my ironing board, just kinda, you know, roll this edge and press. I pressed this and now I'm going to go and sew all the way around. And when I get to this opening, you just tuck it in and sew across and that is going to close it. Now the scary part, the folding. Just lay this out, the right sides up, and you have your straps are in the opposite directions. Now, depending on which way you put them on, I don't know, it could be a little different than what I have. But from what I get, you want to take this corner, the strap is here, so leave it there. Take this corner that does not have a strap attached and put it down here. Now, I'm just going to put a pin. I don't think anybody else has, but I'm going to. Just right here for now. And then for this corner, also take the corner that does not have a strap attached and go up. I'm going to put a pin. Now, nah, I'm going to put the pin here. Same down here so I can pull that pin out easily. So you have something that looks like this. You have your strap, and you have this folded, you have this folded, and you have your strap. I got interrupted by the phone again, but this time it was a fabric sales rep, one of my favorite places to shop, and I just ordered a bunch of stuff. So exciting. We left off with this. You just saw me do. We folded these things down. Now we're going to fold on the diagonal. We want our two straps to end up on the same side. So that's how you can remember which way to fold. So I have a strap down here. So I'm going to take this side and fold on the diagonal like this. So my straps are on the same side. And this is the wrong side, the lining, and that's okay. And we're going to like just pinch this, just the top layer. We want to sew this shut. So I'm just going to put a couple pins. So I'm just putting a couple of pins. When I go to the machine, I will start here and just sew to the end. Let's flip it. 
And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to bring this up to here. And we're going to lift these and put a couple pins. We're almost done. So I'm sewing this and on the other side I'm sewing that. This is what we end up with. I really love it. I just wish it... Oh my god, you got to be kidding me. I want my phone to stop ringing. I wish this was up a little higher, but that's just the way they come out. I could play with it and see if I could come up with some kind of design where maybe using different measurements, whatever. I think I'm going to leave it as fully reversible. Now, if you wanted a boxed bottom, you can watch the other videos, but you just open it up this way, flatten it out, and sew about maybe two inches down, and then trim. But I kind of like it like this. Now, let me turn it. So you see, it's finished, so it would be fully reversible. Everything is finished. Let's turn it to the right side out. This pattern, I just love it so much, especially with this lining. Oh, I'm so torn if I want to do a boxed bottom or not. I think I'm going to just call it quits on this one since it's the first time I ever make one. Look how pretty this is. It's very hard to show you because I, I'm not far enough away, but I will be taking pictures of this. I think these straps are plenty long. You can either tie a knot any old way you want, or you could get the length you like and stitch them together. You could even put some decorative buttons, or you could close it with uh, pins or brooches or whatever you want to do. And you got yourself a nice bag. It's got a nice wide opening, and I know some people say it's a good beach bag, and I think that it is because you're mainly putting like maybe a blanket or a towel, or maybe, a, I don't know, a bottle of water. I like it, and I don't think it has to have the boxed bottom. But you know what you could do if you wanted to? You could take your point and get a rubber band and just bunch this tip up. Put a rubber band and then when you turn it, it would be bunched up in the corners. I like that idea. And then if you want to do it inside out, reversible, you would just take your rubber band off and you would do that on the, you know, on the other color. That might sound very confusing. I don't feel like going to get rubber bands to show you. <laughs> Here it is, folks. My first origami bag, and I like it. I think I've learned some cool things that will give me ideas for other bags. Love this pattern. If you're an exclusive shopper, do look for this fabric in my upcoming sale. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, go check out the link for the penny auction. Don't go away. Don't. I went and got some rubber bands. I absolutely love this. Look. I'll show you the inside. It's just a whole different bag. And what's awesome is it's still fully reversible. You didn't have to sew anything to make the bottom like that. I just love it. It's just all scrunched up. Okay, so let me show you the inside. And then we'll flip it and do it the other way. See, I just put rubber bands around the corners like that. So let's try flipping it. Even if that gets like permanently wrinkled, that's okay because when you flip it, you're going to, you know, be doing the same on the other side. So I'm just going to Take it and you can do it as deep as you want. Just wrap it around. This is such a cool idea. I'm glad I had it. <laughs> I 
I'm, I've not seen anybody do this. I don't know. Somebody may have. All right, so now let's turn it. See, and if you want it the other way, same thing. Nice scrunched up corners. It just makes the bag have a rounded bottom. I do like the other print on the outside better. So it's totally up to you. You can leave it like this or you can bunch up the corners like I just showed you and then have a different bag. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.